Charlie and Kurt are best friends and think their relationship is platonic. When she's about to lose him to a perfect woman, Charlie realizes she has feelings for him. Charlie is preparing to perform for the crowd. They don't care about her thoughts on true love. She wants to play an original song, but the crowd is restless. They ask her to play a cover. She's about to start when she gets an all-too-familiar message from someone. She finds her best friend, Kurt, in the crowd. But things are very strained between them. He used to be very close to her, but became a total stranger over time. They were inseparable at one point, and used to hang out and talk for hours. They had many memories to share, and everything was going great. But three years ago, Charlie did something she will always regret. Her sister, Shelby, thinks she shouldn't have bragged about them being platonic when she obviously had feelings. She wants Charlie to confess something to Kurt before it's too late. As Kurt stops to get some food on their journey, Shelby thinks Charlie is jealous because Jane stole her best friend. In 2019, she did something stupid that makes her lose the only person she has ever loved. She wakes Kurt up to go shopping for her godson. She wants him to drive her to his birthday in Laguna like every year. She agrees to pay for the tolls and is sure he doesn't mind the free food. She is afraid of being alone because everyone at the party will go their separate ways with their partners. She's turning 32 and she feels the clock is ticking for her. She expected to move into a new house and have a third baby with her husband by this age. Kurt doesn't want her to compare herself to her friends and feel pressured about settling down. For him, there's no need for this self-imposed timeline. She thinks even he must get lonely without a girlfriend telling him she loves him and asking if he ate something. Charlie already does all this with him, and he thinks one is enough. He is against dating apps and thinks Charlie needs to try dating someone in the real life to find a long-term relationship. He asks her to give her colleague, Hans, a chance. He has been asking her out for two years and is obviously interested. But she avoids the Hans topic like he avoids dating apps, and they're both practically the same. She agrees to go on a date with Hans if he agrees to try dating apps. This way, they both get a chance to prove their points. Hans asks if Charlie wants to order something, and she refuses. But she remembers her promise to Kurt and offers to eat out with him. They have a great time discussing how tough their work is and how their director can be brutal. It has already been an hour and they decide to go back to work. At the birthday party, Charlie brings Kurt's favorite carrot cake for him. She thinks raising a family is expensive and seems to have changed her mind about settling down. But she did her bit and went out with hands. She had a good time and now she wants Kurt to try online dating as they discussed. They all play a game around the table. When it's Kurt and Charlie's turn, and they almost kiss, he kisses her all over her face to make it less awkward. Their friends think they are too close and wonder if they have ever hooked up. Charlie claims it happened just one time, but they realized it was too gross and they're platonic. It happened on a night they were very drunk. She remembers they had both broken up with their partners recently and were horny. So, they had sex and instantly felt weird about it. But they realized it's not for them and never did it again. Kurt is opening a bar where he wants her to perform for the grand opening. He wants her opinion on the menu, but Hans keeps texting and wants to go out with her again. Kurt finally admits he's ready to try her dating apps. He lets her install the app on his phone and promises to go on a date with the woman she finds for him. But he knows it might not work and thinks it will prove his perfect woman isn't on any app. She uploads a bad photo of him so they can love him for who he is. She gets a few calls where she explains it's a poser account. She is handling it as Kurt's best friend, so a lot of women don't want to take things forward. Some of them agree to meet her. She meets Jonah, Alice, Drea and Rihanna at the same cafe. Some of them seem too serious and ready to settle down with Kurt. The others make her feel uncomfortable. After all the unsuccessful meetings, Charlie tries to find solace in a carrot cake. But she realizes it's amazing and asks the waiter about the baker. His boss, Jane Montemayor, has made the cake and Charlie thinks she might be the perfect girl for Kurt. She didn't find her on a dating app, but Charlie is determined to find a way out. That night, Charlie starts scrolling through the app and gets excited when she finds Jane on it. She starts selling Jane to Kurt as the perfect woman. Jane has been running her cafe for five years and has another branch. She is five years younger than him and she doesn't think it's a problem. His carrot cake standards are very high, but she's sure Jane exceeds them too. She is proud of herself for finding her and he asks if she's free to meet him that weekend. Charlie awkwardly asks him to sit while she looks around. She assures him Jane won't stand him up and must be busy with the shift. Kurt spots her, so Charlie gets up to talk to her. They haven't matched on the app and Jane doesn't know about Kurt yet. Charlie tries to strike an awkward conversation. She compliments Jane's carrot cake and learns that she still has eight left. She offers to buy all of them if she agrees to have a cup of coffee with Kurt for 10 minutes. Charlie tries to find an explanation for why she knows her name. She eventually claims she got Kurt there because of her carrot cake. Charlie knows she's coming off as crazy, but begs Jane to give him one chance. Jane agrees, and she watches from a distance and feels proud of herself. 
She texts Kurt for an update, but he seems busy talking to her. From then, everything goes downhill for Charlie and Kurt. She's cooking in his house when he gets back from the date, and wants to know all details. He admits the carrot cake was delicious, but knows she lied about how she found Jane. She still thinks it doesn't matter if they're soulmates. Charlie wants him to ignore the technicality. They are both on the same app, but just met through her. She is desperate to know if there's going to be a second date but he blushes and gets into the shower. She keeps texting him for updates, but he doesn't share anything. She has an amazing date with Hans, and they play games all day. When she arrives home, she texts Kurt with an update. She thinks there's potential with Hans, and he was a gentleman. Kurt checks out Jane's profile and finally accepts her request. When Jane teases him about taking three days to approve, he blushes. He texts Charlie to wish her goodnight, but he gets very busy after that. He doesn't respond to her calls, and she seems disinterested when Hans talks to her. She gets excited about someone's call since she thinks it's Kurt, but it turns out to be their director asking them to come back to work. She watches his picture with Jane and doesn't feel good. Everyone at her sister's place keeps asking about Kurt. She claims he must be busy at the bar, but Shelby thinks he's with Jane all the time. Charlie comes over to have lunch with Kurt and reminds him about the premiere of their film that weekend. He's constantly distracted on the phone and keeps blushing. She asks him to bring Jane along too, but he needs to check before confirming. As he keeps ignoring her, she feels it's getting harder to invite him out. He claims it's crunch time and doesn't care about the gossip she gives him about V being rushed to the hospital for an emergency C-section. She snatches his phone when he's being too rude, but he claims it's work. She knows he's talking to Jane, but gives the phone back. He reminds her she's playing on the opening night, and she promises to be there. Charlie is a hit with the crowd on the opening night, and everyone loves her songs. She asks for any requests, and a man wants her to play something sad. She dedicates the song about a broken heart to that man. She's excited when she starts singing, but notices that Kurt is on his phone. He leaves and comes back in a while with Jane. She meets everyone and seems to gel well. But Charlie feels upset and keeps looking at Kurt and Jane as she sings. Hans notices her looking at them and feels awkward too. Kurt also notices how she is looking at him and feels uncomfortable. Charlie feels irritated because everyone loves Jane. She doesn't want to hear more about how good a baker Jane is. Their friends have heard that her carrot cake is so good that Charlie bought all of it to set Kurt and Jane up. Kurt feels grateful she did that, and Shelby jokes about how Jane wasn't even in the shortlisted candidates. Jane remembers how persistent Charlie was, and they all feel she couldn't have said no when Charlie bought so much from her. They ask Kurt and Jane about details of their relationship. Kurt claims they're just friends enjoying each other's company. Charlie, who is very drunk, finds it funny that he's still ignoring her texts for just a friend. It gets awkward soon, so they change the topic to Hans and Charlie's relationship. Hans isn't sure of what to say and turns to Charlie for an answer. But she feels very sick and starts puking. Hans gets up to help her, but notices Kurt coming and backs off. While Kurt takes her to the bathroom, the friends make fun of how much she has puked. Kurt holds her hair in the bathroom and helps her. But Charlie is hurt that he's breaking the promise he made to her father. She has held on to that promise for more than 15 years, when they met for the first time. In 2004, Charlie brings Kurt to her father's memorial and introduces him as her new best friend. She's very drunk and asks him to promise her dad that he will never leave her. He promises, but Charlie hopes he's not like her parents who left her. She thinks her dad wants reassurance, so she makes Kurt raise his hand for a pledge. She makes him swear on the ashes of her father. He doesn't repeat after her, and they both laugh about how long that pledge was. But he still promises to never leave her. In the present, she's on the verge of suffering from a broken promise because of her own fault. She wakes up hungover to a text from Kurt. He explains that Jane changed her clothes when she kept throwing up all night. She also gets a friend request from Jane and gets irritated that she has to accept it. Hans knocks on her door and asks to come in. He heats food for her and keeps some drinks in the fridge so she can rehydrate. She is grateful and enjoys the dish he made for her. But he wonders if they still have a chance. It felt good when she finally noticed him after so many years. But last night, he felt like he became invisible to her again. Charlie thinks she should have seen this coming. She remembers what her mother told her about three types of men. One of them is the fling guy who only shows up quarterly or on special events, and that guy is called a season. A few months later, Charlie asks all artists to get ready for the model posing for them. As they start drawing her boyfriend, Ed, Charlie takes out a surprise poster for him. She distracts him and starts seducing him. The artists who are painting see his private parts growing and draw that too. He thinks she embarrassed him and doesn't care that she's trying to make an effort. He reminds her their relationship wasn't going to be serious anyway, and breaks up with her. As Charlie cries about her broken heart, Kurt asks her to pay up because his relationship lasted longer. She is more worried about the scene she created. 
After Ed breaks up with her, she starts pouring champagne on his head and ranting about how he wasted three months of her life. She then takes the drinks and the cheese plate away after taunting him about not being good enough. She feels upset she gave so much in the relationship without getting anything in return. She is afraid her lifetime partner isn't looking out for her anymore. She thinks Ed was in the category of season, because she dated him since it felt nice to have someone on Valentine's Day. But she knows there are people who come to your life and you love them a lot. And when it's over, you get to look back to understand why it didn't work. Kurt's favorite was still her first boyfriend, Jonas. She held hands and kissed for the first time with him. She was excited for two summers, but he disappeared in the third. He got someone pregnant while she was just trying to get to second base with him. She was heartbroken, but they still did it at the beach. Kurt also remembers her being very invested in Tunic. He helped her look around for him the next summer. She thanks him for always being there, but he's her best friend and promises to be there for everything. He reminds her of her fling with her boss. Her wife caught him cheating with Charlie and beat him up. Charlie thinks she learned a lesson from Nico about not falling for guys like that. She places Nico in the second category of me. Or reason, because she learned a lot from that experience. The third category of a lifetime partner, which to her is the most elusive. She used to think a lab would be her lifetime partner, but he had a weird lifestyle. She turned vegan for a year and a half for him. She also knew something was strange when he refused to go down on her because of his religion. When he decided to go to the mountains, she was relieved to let him. She didn't mind being a vegan, but she had a problem with him not giving her orgasms. Kurt also believes he was definitely a part of a cult. But now, Charlie knows she has been looking for a lifetime partner in all the wrong places. She thinks she should have looked at Kurt, who was right in front of her. Charlie cooks for Kurt in his apartment and waits for him to come home. He gets very late and she starts getting sleepy. Just when she's about to wrap up, she watches Kurt and Jane come in. She tries to hide in one of the rooms, but ends up under their bed. Jane gets angry about Charlie being there, and walks off. Kurt doesn't let Charlie leave and asks for an explanation. He thinks she can't keep coming to his house unannounced like this anymore. She feels like everything has changed for them after Jane came into his life. Before her, she was allowed to drop into his house anytime. She misses him, and feels bad she can't get hold of him and discuss what's going on his life anymore. She wants to know what has changed in their friendship, and who is Jane to him. He shows her a ring he got for Jane. He has only known her for five months, but he is planning to ask her to marry him. Charlie panics and claims she is pregnant. She apparently slept with a guy called JK a few times. She couldn't introduce him to Kurt because he has been very busy recently. She keeps changing some facts in her story, but claims they didn't use a condom once, which led to this. He scolds her for being so irresponsible. She asks him to take it easy because she is freaking out too. He tries to comfort her and asks what she wants. Charlie thinks they can start by telling JK about the baby. She doesn't want him to know she's lying, and starts making up stories. When he asks where JK is, she takes a location from a magazine kept there and claims he is in Northern Ilocos. She asks Kurt to come with her to find JK, and pretends to be scared about doing this alone. She knows all this is her fault, and she paid the price for it. A week later, they begin their journey to Ilocos. Charlie knows what she's doing is wrong, but hopes that Kurt realizes she is his lifetime partner. They decide to stay at a hotel where there's just one room and one bed. Charlie knows she loves him and has always loved him. He asks to sleep in the same bed if she doesn't mind. He doesn't think Jane will mind either. He has told Jane it might take a week for them to find JK, and she seems to be fine with it. He asks Charlie not to worry about these things, because he doesn't want her to stress with the baby. He also assures her that he wants to be there for her. She wants to know what exactly happened between him and Jane. She feels like they have lost touch, and there's still a lot she doesn't know. He shares that video calls led to many dates, and he just fell in love with Jane. He's sure it's love, because he feels like a new person with her. Charlie silently cries as he explains how Jane makes him want to be better, and plan his future with her. She makes him feel alive, and he loves her for it. Kurt introduces Charlie to their new friends in the hotel, Elton and Alga. They have invited Kurt and her for glamping for a night. She thinks they have other things to do, but Kurt is confident they can do the detour and still find JK. Charlie doesn't have JK's pictures, number or social media details. She keeps making up stories about his appearance and profession. Kurt asks for an accurate description, and she hesitates before giving some general details. Jane asks about the progress on their journey, and asks him to be safe. He misses her, and promises to be back soon. Kurt asks Charlie not to worry, because Jane seems fine about him being there. Charlie feels bad for being stupid and dragging him into her mess. He assures her he would have come for her anyway. He's not just doing this because he feels guilty about being an absent friend. The tour guide takes them glamping, and shows them special windmills that seem to have powers. According to the legend, someone can whisper things to the windmill they're too embarrassed to admit out loud. It is also said that the windmills can pass up secret thoughts and feelings. Elton shouts out to someone called Rose and hopes to propose to her. Charlie shuts her eyes and hopes that Kurt realizes she is his lifetime partner. She finds him right in front of her when she opens them, and they smile at each other. Olga can tell Charlie is in love with Kurt, even if she doesn't admit it. 
Olga feels they're never going to see each other again, so she can share secrets. She can tell Charlie feels very restless and wants her to let it out. Charlie admits she loves Kurt, and Olga teases her about the windmill whispering this to her. Olga asks to take her hand and can tell she's keeping a lie from Kurt that is dangerous. They're heading back, and Kurt asks her to not put her head outside. He teases her about not wanting to go back without her if she gets hit by something. She's not afraid of the hills, because she feels she has one foot in the grave anyway. She wonders about the flashes people get in the last moment before they perish. Kurt knows he will get flashes of the day he met Charlie, and she forces him to dance with her. It's his favorite memory, and Charlie is also sure she will see some flashback of him in her last moments. She can't imagine her life without him, and wants him to know he's her only constant. Kurt is unable to get a signal to contact Jane, but he's more worried about the fact that they couldn't find JK. Charlie loves being there in the moment when it seems like the time has stopped. Kurt thinks she will never be alone now, because she will have a child. He asks if she's scared of a new chapter in her life. She claims she's scared of everything, so he holds her hand and reassures her. He promises to never let her be alone even if JK doesn't want to be with her. He remembers the promise he made to her dad, and plans to keep it. At the bonfire, Kurt is looking up at the three stars in a line. She can't see them, so he tries to point them out. But he looks down and finds her face very close to his. She kisses him, gently, and he seems a little surprised. But he kisses her back. Olga and Ernie also watch them sharing a moment. Back in their room, Charlie prepares to confess everything to him. But before she can say anything, Kurt kisses her again. He wakes up to his phone ringing. But he ignores it when he finds blood on the sheets and asks if something is wrong with the baby. She finally confesses that she's not pregnant. She explains that she was desperate and couldn't see him with anyone else. She wants to be the only one he needs, and realizes she wants him as her life partner. She got worried when he shared his plans of getting married to Jane, and planned all this so they could spend some time together. She wants to know she genuinely loves him and apologizes. But Kurt is very angry, and leaves after packing up. Charlie cries alone and tries to find her way out of there. She finds a bus, and calls Kurt from her room. But he doesn't answer, and blocks her on social media too. Her key to his house don't fit, and she thinks me might have changed the locks. She knocks, but a strange man opens the door and claims no one called Kurt lives there anymore. She goes to stay with Shelby, but seems distracted with anything she has to say. Charlie calls Kurt and apologizes for what she did to him. She claims she'll do anything for his forgiveness. She just wants to know what he wants from her. But he has nothing to say, and cuts the phone. He even seems angry with a photo of them together. Shelby knows she can't keep mourning like this, and needs a new hobby. Charlie starts throwing away all her stuff related to Kurt. She admires her scrapbook, and doesn't know what to feel about Kurt's photo in the lifetime section. In the present, on the night for her performance, Charlie feels weird about running into Kurt. It has been three years since they last spoke, and she still feels weak in front of him. He wants to share that he's getting married to Bianca. He met her through the manager of his bar, Ambo. She's an architect, and was there for Kurt at a time when he was a mess. Charlie finally feels like she's in a good place, and thinks he is ruining it by being there. Kurt only came because he wanted to share the news about his marriage with his best friend. She hugs him, and claims she's only crying because she's hungry. They start catching up with each other about what they're doing for work. Charlie still works in production, but she's now in a different office close to her previous one. Kurt has shut down his bar because it wasn't profitable. He has now entered franchising with Bianca. As they walk around, they remember the silly things Charlie used to say. He thinks she is known for inventing stories, especially about the one where they had sex. He reminds her what actually happened that day. Charlie was very drunk, and thought she was having sex with Kurt but he just put her to bed when she was horny. She feels more embarrassed now, and wants a beer. She asks about Bianca, because she's excited about her best friend getting married. She's two years older than Kurt, and very driven. She has a dark sense of humor, and Kurt feels like she and Charlie will get along really well. He has told her everything about Charlie. Bianca thinks Charlie was stupid to let Kurt go. Charlie starts crying when she realizes how true that is. They both cry and hug each other. On Kurt's wedding day, Charlie plays a song for the bride's entry. She cries as she remembers the first time they met, and all the moments they have shared together. Kurt loves her as his best friend, and is glad she's singing for his wedding. They're now in a happy place as close friends. 